What's up? How's it going? We're in the Marid Hendlands Hostel. The Marid Hendlands is about 20 minutes past the Golden Gate Bridge. It's the first exit, and there are some beautiful, beautiful places and some beautiful buildings. So we're just out here for the weekend, enjoying the uh, winter break, even though it looks like spring. There's something special about traveling places at night because you get to wake up and you're in an entire new place. It's kind of like a surprise the morning you wake up. You get to get out and explore an entirely new environment. So let's go explore. Okay, so this right behind me, this is the hostel. I believe these buildings were all part of the Navy base that used to be here. And there are a bunch of bunkers and batteries in these hills in front of me that they used as lookout points to watch for enemy missiles or ships coming. So there's tons of these beautiful old buildings that were all shut down. So they're just turned into houses or hostels or there's an art center, there's churches, there's, it's just, there's visitor centers. It's just really cool old historic buildings that people have repurposed. So today I'm just gonna explore, I'm just gonna get some shots of these buildings and show you what it's like to be here. So this is the Headland Center for the Arts and it looks pretty cool. It's pretty empty for a uh, Thursday morning, but look at this drinking fountain. This has got to be one of the weirdest drinking fountains I've ever seen. The only problem with it is that you're wasting water. Look, I press the one button, both go off. That's kind of a bad design because it's totally wasting water, but at least you have water to drink out here. At the Marin Headlands, there's this huge lagoon that has a beach. So I'm gonna walk over there and check it out. I don't think that's the right way. Before I go to the beach, I'm gonna check out the Marin Headlands Visitor Center. Okay, so I learned that the Visitor Center actually used to be an old church. And I also learned that this place was built during World War II. So I was right in saying that this place was used for a war. So now I'm heading out on the lagoon trail to check out Rodeo Beach, Rodeo Beach. I'm not exactly sure. It's really a strange beach because there's this whole lagoon of water that's coming into the land, but then there's like a beach that's cutting it off from the rest of the ocean. I don't know if that's how all lagoons work. I haven't really been to many lagoons in my life, but it still is such a strange land formation that I've never seen before. I just spotted the first battery. I'm pretty sure a battery is just another name for like a lookout point. I'm not exactly sure. Basically just like a big concrete stand that people used to look out and like watch for the enemy attack. I don't get it. Like how did, how did that water get over there? And how did so much of that water get over there to be able to fill up this entire huge lagoon? I guess I should probably go study my lagoons. I've never really, uh, looked into them before. The gravel is turning into sand. That's always a good sign. The sand is weirdly dark here. I'm not really sure why. Look at how rocky this is. This is like way rockier than any other beach I've been to. It looks like pictures of Hawaii almost, like the rockiness of this beach. I mean, it's obviously not as big as the cliffs in Hawaii, but it's still gorgeous going through the cave. Oh my gosh. Whoa, it's so serene. 
and we made it to the other side. Definitely looks like there was like a landslide here. This is one of those spots where I wish I had a drone. It's also one of those spots that I wish flying a drone was legal. Imagine the shots you could get. Like look, all these rocks flying over them with the ocean and these huge cliffs. Could you imagine? I really, really wish I had a drone. now climbing up this hill I don't really know what's up here besides an absolutely gorgeous view I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's a very faint, like a bell ringing, a, a big bell ringing, a very faint sound far away. I think it might be from one of the buoys out way out in the ocean, but it's just such a calming, peaceful noise. All right, we've been hiking for long enough. Let's take a break. The sound of the ocean and the sound of that bell noise are just so calming and so peaceful. It's so easy to relax. Time to keep hiking. I'm getting close to a view that you can see all of San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge and there's a bunch of these weird um, bunker battery things that I'm gonna go check out too. That view is so far away but it's just because I have an insanely wide lens and I don't have a zoom lens with me so the city looks way farther away than it actually is. The contrast between the beach I was just at and all this nature, these trees, these rocks, and then this huge massive city with a huge bridge. Something about that contrast is just beautiful to me. Now I'm gonna go walk over to the biggest bunker that they have here. This is Battery Mantel. It is the biggest battery in this whole area. There's this weird little coliseum thing. I'm not really sure what they would use this for. I'm on the top of the battery. I love how they let you go up here. There's no like no trespassing. You're you're allowed to come up here and mess around. Well, not mess around, but like take photos, take videos, just just explore it. I love when they do that with old historic places like this and not just close them off and maybe even tear them down. I love when they turn them into a place that the public can come and explore and see for themselves like the actual history. When I was a kid, I honestly learned so much just by going places and like experiencing the history for myself. Not, not just reading in a textbook, but actually going to the places where these historic things happened and learning by actually being there. This is what the battery looks like from the front side. It's basically just a huge concrete slab that no one would be able to recognize. But on the back, it's this huge bunker. This is like one of the main lookout points. It's in the center of the battery. And look, over here, got San Francisco. Over here, got that beach. And straight ahead, you got the entire ocean. Not a bad lookout spot. This is very, very well planned.
Here is another one of those batteries. I'm sure the audio sounds amazing. I'm not exactly sure what a battery means. So my guess is that a battery is just a place where they housed the guns and the missiles. One thing I want to say before I head back is just that when you travel alone, it can be really easy to get lonely. Especially when you're in such a beautiful place like this and you want to share it with your family and your friends, but they're not able to be there with you. And one thing that probably a lot of my viewers know is that I'm the youngest of eight kids. So my whole life pretty much, I've always had my older siblings with me everywhere I go. But now they're all moved out and being the youngest and the last one still at home, it's just really easy to get lonely. So I'm gonna share some tips on how to not be lonely when you're traveling alone. Tip number one is just to focus on where you are and what's in front of you and to see the beauty and not feel like you have to share it with anyone else. Just be content that you get to be in such a beautiful place. And if you're like me and you like taking photos or videos, you do get to share a piece of your trip with your family and your friends. Another tip is to try to make friends everywhere you are. I like staying at youth hostels because a lot of the time it's young people who are by themselves who also are trying to reach out and make friends. So it's really easy to make connections and to hear new stories and talk to new people because they're just as willing to talk to you. Of course, the most obvious answer to being lonely is just to travel with other people, but we don't always get the luxury of being able to do that, all right? I'm heading back to the hostel. I'm also walking in the middle of the road. I really hope I don't get hit. But this was a wonderful time with a wonderful hike. This is definitely one of my favorite spots just because it has so much natural beauty contrasted with that man-made beauty, the city and those all those bunkers. But I really enjoy that contrast and I enjoy being here. 